cognitive therapy can be used to help treat depression and anxiety in children. Um, but the first part we're going to discuss is just what is mindfulness? That's a huge part of MBCT, so it's an important part to address. Mindfulness can be defined as paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, non-judgmentally. So the idea behind mindfulness is bringing non-judgmental attention to your current events. Um, they can be external or internal. Um, an example of internal events would be your thoughts, emotions, perceptions, and body sensations. Um, external events are things like your environment, your situational, and interpersonal experiences. Um, these current situations are defined as nowscapes. And one of the developers of mindfulness, Kabat-Zinn, explains that by practicing mindfulness, you are bringing um, attention over and over again to these nowscapes. Mindfulness is hard to describe, so let me give you a couple of other ways to look at it. So there's doing mode versus being mode. Doing mode is a state in which the mind recognizes the discrepancy between how things are compared to how they ought to be and is characterized by efforts to reduce the discrepancy. Being mode is the mindfulness mode. Being mode is where you just are. Um, you could also look at it as narrative versus experiential. So, so narrative is talking about the experience as it relates to yourself. Um, experiential is just is the same as being mode or is the same as mindfulness. So it is that where you just are and you're in the present moment and you're just having thoughts and recognizing that that's what it is and then it goes away. Okay, so one expected outcome of mindfulness is called decentering. And with decentering, this is the process of recognizing your feelings, making mental notes about them, understanding them, feeling the body sensations, things like that, but also recognizing that thoughts are transient. They are a thought on just a thought, we let them go. They don't define us, we don't internalize them. We just recognize that they're a thought and that's that. So when you accomplish decentering, you're recognizing your thoughts, accepting the emotions, and letting the thought and the emotions go. Something else that would be learned as a result of practicing mindfulness would be choice points. The choice points, uh, they occur hundreds of times a day. Um, those are choices that can be made in the moment. Um, and when you learn mindfulness, then you can learn if you're going to react or if you're going to say hey there's a choice to be made here and I'm going to choose mindfully. Recognizing a choice point increases the ability to respond to events with mindful awareness. Okay so now we've covered some of the core components of what mindfulness is. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between mindfulness based cognitive therapy or mindfulness and um, cognitive behavioral therapy. With mindfulness, it does borrow some aspects from cognitive behavioral therapy, um, such as your problem formulation, um, how the therapist and client will work on focusing on current experiences, um, you will identify goals, as well as repeatedly um, take note and keep track of your thoughts and feelings. Um, in mindfulness therapy, just like cognitive behavioral therapies, you will have weekly homeworks and there will also be evaluations for treatment efficacy. However, mindfulness is m more of a resilience-based therapy, whereas cognitive behavioral therapy is focusing more on the deficit side of thinking. Um, mindfulness-based therapy is usually delivered in a group setting. Um, it can be done one-on-one, -on -one, but it does seem to have better outcomes when delivered in a group setting, um, whereas with cognitive therapies, you're usually just a one-on-one -on -one setting with you and your therapist. In cognitive therapies, you're usually focusing more on restructuring your thoughts. Um, you work a lot with your therapist on identifying your maladaptive thoughts and recognizing how the, those thoughts influence your emotions and your behaviors. Um, you work on restructuring those thoughts to develop more positive thoughts and better um, I statements. And a lot of times this is seen as metacognitive knowledge. That can be defined as understanding that a thought is not necessarily accurate. 
When you're working with mindfulness and mindfulness-based cognitive therapies, you're going to focus more on decentering, which is what we talked about earlier. But you are observing the experience of thinking um, with the aim of accepting those thoughts as just being thoughts. You are repeatedly bringing attention to those thoughts, um, accepting them and letting them go. You don't let them become a reality and you don't let the thoughts identify yourself. Um, it's also known as metacognitive insight and that can be defined as experiencing thoughts through events in the field of awareness regardless of their content. And the thing to remember with mindfulness and decentering is that at times you're going to be encouraged to sit with thoughts that are uncomfortable. However, part of the focus is recognizing those uncomfortable feelings, sensations, um, physical body symptoms, and letting them go. To, to feel the anxiety rise, accept that it's just anxiety about that situation, you can overcome it, and feeling your body relax when you let the thought go. There's situational exposure as well as exposure to life. Uh, CBT therapies tend to use exposure-based therapies um, to help alleviate anxious tendencies, whereas mindfulness draws upon the client's ability to use mindfulness attention um, when making choices to, pro pro to promote psychological resiliency. So CBT is going to focus more on a specific phobia. There's going to be a specific reason that you have come in or you're working with your client on a specific fear or phobia. With mindfulness, this can be applied to everyday thinking. It does not just require a specific phobia to be used. Changing versus acceptance. With cognitive therapies, oftentimes there is the expectation of changing your thoughts. Um, you have to change maladaptive thoughts and behaviors and in order to experience the desired change. Um, mindfulness is more of an acceptance-based model. They do, not have, they do not attempt to avoid or um, change emotions or thoughts. There is an active and intentional engagement with life. So you are purposely doing these things to purposely experience, whether it's positive or negative sensations. And it is through that acceptance stance, it's through accepting that anxiety and feeling the anxiety leave your body, that the cha therapeutic change actually occurs. Cognitive therapies, again, are primarily about changing maladaptive thoughts. Um, they label thoughts as dysfunctional and encourage change. With mindfulness, thoughts are just thoughts, and they're accepted as just thoughts. We don't label the thoughts. We don't try to change the thoughts. Um, and we don't try to restructure thinking. So with mindfulness, we don't actively work to change. The changing is the result of mindfulness. We're going to talk about now, in order to achieve or to practice mindfulness-based therapies, you need to be a mindfulness therapist yourself. So Germer suggests three levels of stratification. The first level is just level one, which is the mindfulness-based therapist. With with that, you as the therapist, or whoever you're seeing, um, has incorporated mindfulness practice into their daily lives. Um, this helps increase your therapeutic relationship, um, become more congruent with the client, help you better empathize with the client, um, present focused attention, as well as compassion for your client. Level two is mindfulness informed therapy. So. This will be when a therapist, or you as a therapist, will use a mindfulness theoretical framework as um, the kind of guide for your therapeutic practice. However, you do not treat, you do not introduce um, mindfulness techniques into your therapeutic sessions. Um, level three is actually mindfulness-based therapy. So that will incorporate level one, having a mindfulness, or being a mindfulness therapist, Level two, which is using um, theore mindfulness theoretical framework for your interventions. And with level three, you will also incorporate teachings and practices of mindfulness in your therapeutic sessions. So you as the therapist will be doing these practices with your clients, or as a client, your therapist should be doing these practices with you during sessions.
Okay, so how does mindfulness view the problem? So they say the problems are ruminating and how you perceive things. So, you know, ruminating over past failures can cause depression. Being too overly anxious about the future can cause us anxiety. So these ruminations and these perceptions cause us to avoid things or create maladaptive behaviors to cope. That makes the problem worse. So when we ruminate or worry too much, our brains register the thoughts as immediate threats. So mindfulness calls these perceptions um, reactions or vedanas, and there's three different kinds. There's moving towards, moving away, and being unmoved. So moving towards is when we have an effective movement toward an event, idea, feeling, uh, object, or person that we judge positively. Moving away is when an emotion is negative. This is when we avoid or have maladaptive behaviors to cope. Um, being unmoved is how we spend most of our day. Most of our day we don't um, consider anything to be positive or negative and we're not noticing anything either. All right, so how do we change that? We don't, we just accept it. Uh, mindfulness teaches us to accept things in the present moment. Live in the nowscape. Um, we simply watch those thoughts be thoughts. We um, give attention to the process and not the content of our thoughts. We just notice the feelings and the body sensations. Um, we practice non-judgmental awareness. Um, there's no need to change it, we just be aware of it. The aim of MBCT is to reduce anxiety and suffering by enhancing awareness. By living in the present, we can make more mindful choices at our choice points. Choice points are simply moments in which mindful choices can be made. Mindfulness can also be viewed as a type of um, exposure and response prevention where we're exposing ourselves to those thoughts and feelings and body sensations um, and we're just having them. We're just accepting that they're there. There are four behavior altering insights that are to be learned as a result of practicing mindfulness. So we learn the power of our thoughts. We learn that they can be very powerful and that they can um, make us feel anxious or depressed. Thoughts and emotions can be on autopilot. Thoughts come and go, and we have little control over them. And as a result of these insights, the power of thoughts to influ influence our behaviors may decrease. Neurologically, uh, threatening thoughts take up processing space and resources. The amygdala is in overdrive because of these thoughts, which makes it difficult to think clearly. By labeling, labeling thoughts and feelings as mental events, threat signals are reduced and your prefrontal cortex can then work better, helping you to make good decisions. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit more about actual mindfulness-based cognitive therapies. Um, there are numerous ones that incorporate mindfulness-based practices. However, the only ones that mindfulness is actually the um, main focus is mindfulness-based stress reduction and mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. Mindfulness-based stress reduction was actually developed um, as an eight-week program to utilize with people um, who are suffering from chronic pain but is also from from that point on has been applied to a wider range of, of situations. Mindfulness-based stress reduction is presented more in an educational setting as opposed to a therapeutic setting. Um, it's developed by incorporating mindfulness practices into your daily living. 45 minutes of meditation is recommended in order to um, strengthen the patient's abilities to reduce stress during chronic pain situations. Um, this is important to discuss because it did provide the framework for mindfulness-based cognitive therapies. There is an adaptation to mindfulness-based stress reduction um, for children. It is known as MBSR. Um, it's been adapted for clinical settings as well as group settings. Um, and the difference comes in everything is developmentally appropriate. So there are shorter exercises than the adult program. Right now the suggestion is one minute per age of the child. So if you have a five-year-old child, five minutes of meditation daily is encouraged as opposed to an adult who is encouraged to participate in 45 minute, minutes of 
meditation or mindfulness practices a day. They use other sensory and multimodal learning activities. Um, and for younger clients, it's important to remember that parental involvement um, is necessary. So for mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, it is based upon mindfulness-based stress reduction therapy. Um, this was developed by Zendel Segal, Mark Williams, and John Teasdale. It often includes um, simple breathing and meditation, as well as yoga stretches and practices. Um, and through these practices, the client becomes more aware of their current situation and also helps them get in touch with moment-to-moment -moment changes physiologically and psychologically within their body. So, how does mindfulness-based cognitive therapy work? Um, one of the main ways that it's applied is it, hel it really helps the patient discover what depression may be. Um, it's designed to help with reoccurring depressive episodes or chronic unhappiness. So mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, or MBCT, um, it offers psychoeducation about depression, and it helps the client understand the link between thinking and feeling and how you as a client or you as a therapist can learn to recognize those feelings, um, recognize the depressive thoughts, understand the physiological feelings, um, and learning how to address them and overcome them before they become overwhelming to you. Um, patients often learn to visualize patterns of the mind and recognize when their mood is decreasing in order to implement those changes. This is usually done in an eight week, eight to 12 week sessions. Um, sessions last from one to two hours. However, on occasion, they can last up to two and a half hours. Utilize, they utilize listening tapes at home um, during the week as homework to practice mindfulness alone. Um, the majority of your practice is going to be done at home. You will, you will do some in session with your um, therapist or you as a therapist will do some in session with your client. However, the majority of mindfulness practice is going to take place at home on an individual level in order for people to really get in a meditative state and really be able to um, achieve that mindfulness thinking. Um, and the goal of mindfulness is just to um, achieve metacognitive awareness. Some of the goals of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy is it helps the client recognize and stop the escalation of negative thoughts and focus on the current moment as just um, and not to worry about the past or the future. So focus on the current moment just in the situation they're in. We don't worry about what has happened five minutes, one minute before, what's going to happen five minutes from now. It's just focusing on the current situation. Um, it helps their patient uh, shift your thinking from very critical and judgmental to um, non-conceptually, non-judging, and just recognizing a thought as a thought. And it also helps the client develop a willingness to experience these emotions, even if they're painful. Um, it allows a patient to feel the come and go of the stressful moods without allowing it to overtake their thoughts. Um, there is an adaptation called Mindfulness-Based Cognitive Therapy for Youth, or MBCTC. Um, this has been adapted for children and adolescents. This is usually done in 12 manualized sessions. Um, and it utilizes developmentally appropriate sensory and mindfulness exercises to help children and youth and adolescents accept their thoughts. Um, it is a resiliency-based model. And it encourages the child's response to their own thoughts. Um, personal choices by enhancing present focused awareness as well as learning to accept the things that cannot be changed. Um, so again, helping them not worry about what happened yesterday at school. We're going to focus on where we are right now, what's going on, what am I feeling, what am I hearing, what am I seeing, what am I tasting, and we're not going to worry about what's going to happen five minutes from now. Um, an important thing to note, especially when you're working with children, is to identify an appropriate child 
to work to participate in mindfulness therapies. Um, this will be done through an initial intake interview with your therapist. Um, and you explore with the parents to determine whether they feel like this is the right mode of treatment for their child. Um, things that you need to consider are um, the level of distress. Does this particular child need more than what mindfulness therapies can offer? Um, the level of commitment of parents. Parents' um, interactions and parents' participation is highly, highly desired and almost required for this type of therapy. So are the parents committed? Are you willing to take them weekly for sessions and are you willing to do daily mindfulness practices at home with them as well? Um, level of the motivation of the child and the parent is important. Um, this does take a lot of motivation since the majority of the work is done at home. So are you both equally motivated so that this can be a successful intervention? Um, it is not recommended for children with ADHD unless done in an in individual setting. Um, putting a child with ADHD in a group setting they are not able to achieve the mindfulness level of mindfulness required. And do they have food allergies? Mindfulness is very much a sensory based type of intervention. You're going to do lots of touching, smelling, tasting of foods and objects. And if there are particular allergies to um, foods, then things like that need to be addressed beforehand so adaptions can be made. Okay, now we're gonna talk a little bit about um, for parents. What would an introductory session with you look like? Um, about the first 15 minutes of this session will just be self-introductions. It's going to be questioning and getting to know your therapist, getting um, a little bit more comfortable with talking to your therapist, things like that. Um, then the, your therapist should do a brief um, introduction into what mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, or MBCT-C, for adolescents will cover. Um, and this will give you time to ask questions and explore a little bit further as to whether you really want to jump into this with your child or not. Um, and that will take up about 20 minutes of your session. Um, the next step will be um, experiencing a mindful practice. This is often um, what they call a three minute breathing space where you will just take time um, to relax and become more focused on your current surroundings, your current feelings, your body sensations, things like that. This will usually last to about 10 minutes and with the including the introduction of how to go about this practice. Um, the next step will be something that has to do with like a body sensation. Um, one example that we may show, show you later is an example with a raisin where you will examine the raisin, you will smell it, you will recognize, feel the texture, um, and really recognize what it feels like, what it smells like, and really contemplate the raisin. After you will move to group dialogue. This this will be done in a group setting. So you're going to move to the group dialogue um, to discuss um, mindfulness practices with other members of your therapeutic group and to understand why mindfulness um, can help us all respond more effectively to um, our anxieties and strong emotions. So it will be just a group setting where you discuss your feelings and, and you become more aware of your present situation. And, and this will last about 20 minutes. Um, and finally, um, there will be a discussion um, about the experiences and the parental involvement required. Um, this will be about the last 10 minutes of your session just to make sure parents understand what's to be taken care of at home, the homework assignment, what occurred today in the session, and, and things like that. If I'm bringing my child into you for a mindfulness therapy session, what are some expectations? Well, the therapist will be an integrated participant, not an, an authority on um, mindfulness. I'll be doing the, the exercises with you, uh, or with your child. Um, there'll be a quiet space for your child to um, be by themselves if they need to, or if they don't feel like practicing mindfulness, they can go sit in the quiet space. Um, you will have posted on the walls guidelines for mind mindfulness behavior. Um, so these are basically just treat other people like you want to be treated. Um, there'll be a worry warts waste basket where your child can write down um, any kind of um, worries they have and put it in the waste basket while we have session. Does he have to participate in that? <coughs> no, that is um, voluntary. Okay. And they'll be being present board, so everyone, including myself, will mark whether or not we're present in the session. Um, and that also helps your child keep um, 
some data on their progress. Um, there'll be a Philly face of scale, so you know, when your child comes in, they'll write down um, how they're feeling when they come in, and then how they're feeling when they leave, and that is also for them so they can um, track their progress. Um, we also use the word home practice instead of homework, and if you at home can help us by also calling it home practice, that, that'd be helpful. Okay. Um, we use mats and cushions. We sit on the floor a lot so that we can practice the meditation. Um, we also need the mats for yoga. Okay. Um, there's med um, meditation bells, um, and this is to mark the beginning and the end of a meditation session. Um, your child will also have a binder with different sections okay. um, that will they'll be able to keep their papers that they get during sessions. Um, they're also loaded with worksheets um, and they can take their home practices um, home in those and um, you know we have art supplies and color stickers for them so that they can do the activities. Okay. A general 90 minute session would consist of what? They'll come in and complete the Feely Faces scale. Okay. They'll, we'll take attendance at the front of the board. Okay. Um, we'll also guide them through the first sitting meditation. Okay. Then we'll briefly review what happened in the previous section or session, okay. <clears throat> and then we'll introduce the agenda for the current session. Okay. Uh, after that, we'll review their home practices from the previous week, and we'll also conduct experiential mindfulness awareness practices and activities after that. <coughs> we'll guide the second brief sitting meditation, and then um, we we'll usually read a poem as a group. We complete the second Philly Faces of Scale. Okay. And we'll distribute and read session handouts, and then we'll review the home practices for the upcoming weeks. Okay. So we've already told you about what mindfulness means, and um, we've also told you kind of where it comes from, um, and we've kind of explained about you know how the parents are involved and what the parents will be expected to do. We've also um, covered what a typical session would look like. Now we're going to run through each of the sessions and kind of talk about um, what happens during those sessions, what your child will be doing. Session one is titled Being on Automatic Pilot. So you're going to introduce the idea of mindfulness and um, we're going to talk about um, how your mind is mostly on automatic pilot a lot. So um, a lot of things that we do just happen um, automatically during the day. Um, as well as, you know, some of the, the thoughts that we have and the reactions that we have to our thoughts and our situations. Um, so you're going to explain to them that mindfulness exists and it is a different, more helpful way of being in the world. Um, so in your in-session practices, you're kind of um, going to get to know each other, um, introduce yourself um, as a therapist, and the children will introduce their, their themselves. Um, you will do a, an activity um, called Discovering Mindfulness in a Cup. Um, this is where um, you have two cups of water. One of the cups of water is only filled halfway, and the second cup of water is filled all the way to the top. And so you pass around the first cup of water, and um, they can see how quickly and automatic that happens when there's not a lot of water in the cup. Um, then you give them the second cup. Um, the second cup is filled all the way to the top, and they have to slow their bodies down and pay attention to how they're moving their bodies so that they don't spill the water. And um, after they get done with this, act this activity, the therapist explains to them that um, this is a lot like what mindfulness is, um, where we have to slow ourselves down uh, and really pay attention to what is happening in the present moment. Um, so they'll also do an activity called What Mindfulness Means to Me, which is um, it's a coloring page that you give to them and they draw whatever comes to mind, whatever they think mindfulness is. Um, 
then you will teach them how to take three mindful breaths. So the therapist will guide them through taking the breath and feeling it going into their body and being present while that's happening and then exhaling and um, really noticing what that feels like in the body. Um, the poem stories and other handouts that we'll give to them are um, mindful breathing is the best practice and mindfulness is cultivating attention. So these are some handouts that they get that just kind of introduces them to the idea of mindfulness. Um, you also ask them to do uh, three home practices. Um, the first home practice is mindful breathing lying down. Um, this is generally, you're, uh, the therapist is going to ask them to, um, when they wake up, go ahead and practice mindful breathing while they're laying down when they wake up. And then mindful breathing sitting up, so they're going to choose a time of the day where they can practice mindfulness sitting up. Um, and then living with awareness. So living with awareness is simply practice, um, practicing bringing mindful awareness to one daily activity. So they get to choose whether it's brushing their teeth, getting dressed, eating breakfast, making the bed. Um, so to help them with um, the three home practices, there is a worksheet in which little um, flower faces are on. They can cut the flower faces out and then tape them to wherever they decide they want to do those mindful practices to remind them that that's the time to do it. So session two is titled Being Mindful is Simple but it's not easy. So um, it, it is a simple task to do but it's difficult to remind yourself to do it during the day. Um, so this is explained as the most important session because you are um, convincing them that mindfulness is something that they want to do. Mindfulness can help them. Um, so the key point of this session is that there are reasons why we practice mindfulness and what are the barriers to practicing mindfulness. In session, um, they're going to take three mindful breaths again, and that'll be guided by the therapist. Um, they'll also do an activity called Raisin Mindfulness. So this activity um, is where they take a raisin and they place it in their hand, um, and the therapist walks them through the, sen the senses with this raisin, you know, how does it feel, how does it look, how does it taste, um, and they'll do that very slowly so that the child is given enough time to um, really um, contemplate the raisin in the present moment. <clears throat> um, and then they'll do a, an exercise called mindfully moving slowly. Um, mindfully moving slowly is where they um, start at one side of the room and they have to move to the other side of the room extremely slowly so that they're paying attention to their body and what their body's doing. Um, so, again, in this session, you are helping each child find a personal reason for choosing mindfulness. The poems and stories or handouts that they'll be given are Flight from the Shadow, Practice Mindful Awareness, and instructions for mindful breathing. Their home practices will be living with awareness, mindful breathing, and mindful eating. So the mindful eating exercise, um, you're going to put raisins, um, dried fruit, nuts, whatever um, the therapist um, decides to place in a baggie. Um, that will go home with the child and the child will Practice eating mindfully with these different fruits and nuts or healthy foods that the therapist gives them. So in session two, Flight from the Shadow is something that we will encourage our clients to read. So I'm going to read it for you now. 
There is a man who is disturbed by the sight of his own shadow, and so displeased with his own footsteps, that he determined to get rid of both. The method he hit upon was to run away from them. So he got up and ran. But every time he put his foot down, there was another step. While his shadow kept up with him about the, without the slightest difficulty, he attributed his failure to the fact that he was not running fast enough, so he ran faster and faster without stopping until he finally dropped dead. He failed to realize that if he merely stepped into the shade, his shadow would vanish. If he sat down and stayed still, there would be no more footsteps. Session three is titled, Who Am I? In this session, you're really discussing the nature of thoughts. So in session, you are going to be taking three mindful breaths again. You will be practicing mindfulness of the body, which is um, where this, the children sit, um, and the therapist guides them in thinking about how their body feels from their toes to their head, beginning with a few mindful breaths. The next thing that they're going to cover is an activity called, Hey, I have thoughts, feelings, and body sensations. So this activity um, is also an activity where the therapist guides them while they imagine a scene. So the children are instructed to try and use all five senses while imagining the scene as vividly as they can, like if they're experiencing it right now. Here's a scene that you might hear a therapist telling the children. You are walking down the street, and on the other side of the street, you see someone you know. This person is a good friend of yours. You smile and wave. The person doesn't seem to notice you as you walk by. The therapist would ask the children to notice their thoughts, feelings, and body sensations. After a few moments, then the therapist would ask them to go ahead and write those down. The therapist would also discourage the children from discussing how they felt or thought um, so that when you had the discussion, you could really notice about, notice how different um, the thoughts were or the feelings were or the body sensations were um, to show that not everybody feels or thinks or has the same body sensations so they don't think or feel the same. After they get done um, recording how they felt and how what they thought and um, how their bodies felt. Um, then you would ask them to d discuss what they wrote down. And then you might um, then ask them to write a fourth column titled behaviors and then how their thoughts, their feelings, and their body sensations might then affect their behavior. So the next activity is listening to the sounds of silence. Um, so the therapist would ring a mindfulness bell um, and then allow the sound to continue until it faded out. They um, are asked to sit there for a few minutes and then the therapist would ring it again. So really they're just listening. Then the therapist would ask them, you know, to discuss maybe some sounds that they notice that they hadn't noticed before because um, they're really focusing on um, the silence or how quiet it was or even the bell. And then your home practices are mindful breathing, mindfulness of the body, and then a pleasant events record. With the, the pleasant events record, they're just going to be bringing awareness to one pleasant event every day. Um, they're going to notice any thoughts, feelings, or body sensations and then record them. In session three, one of the handouts that will go home with them is titled, Who Am I? Um, so the handout explains that sometimes thoughts can carry us away, um, and that's called being on automatic pilot. Um, by bringing more awareness to thoughts, feelings, and body sensations, we may notice things that we never seem to notice before. Um, by practicing mindfulness, we may get carried away by thoughts less often. Um, the same event can bring about many different thoughts and feelings. Thoughts can and do change over time. Thoughts are not facts. But thoughts sometimes affect how we feel and how we re react to everyday events. When you are aware of your thoughts, 
you don't have to believe them. Um, basically, they're teaching you that we do not have to react as if we were on automatic pilot. We can respond with mindful awareness. Session four is titled, A Taste of Mindfulness. Um, in this session, they're going to be using their sense of taste to experience mindfulness. Um, so the key points are that thoughts, feelings, and body sensations are not who we are. They are not exactly the same as the events that they describe. So our in-session practices are at the three-minute breathing space. This is the first time that we've um, shown the client how to do a whole three minutes um, breathing. So there's an acronym that goes with that, and the therapist will explain that to um, the child in a developmental way. So the acronym is AGE, so it's Awareness, Gathering, and Expanding. With awareness, you are noticing your breathing. And then with gathering, you're noticing um, other things that are going on in your body with the breathing. And then with expanding, you're expanding that awareness into the environment. The acronym AGE will be explained to the children like this. Um, so awareness is bringing yourself into the present moment by deliberately adopting an erect and dignified posture. If possible, you'll close your eyes. Then you will ask yourself, what is my experience right now? My thoughts, my feelings, my body sensations. Um, you will acknowledge and register the experience, even if it's unwanted. Then gathering um, is explained to the children like this. Then gently redirect full attention to breathing. To each in-breath and to each out-breath as they follow one after the other. Your breath can function as an anchor to bring you into the present and help you tune into a state of awareness and stillness. The expanding is explained to the children like this. Expand the field of your awareness around your breathing so that it includes a sense of the body as a whole, your posture and facial expression. The breathing space provides a way to step out of automatic pilot mode and reconnect with the present moment. The next thing that you will do um, in session would be to open an orange. So it, it's very similar to the Raisin Mindfulness um, activity in that um, they're going to be experiencing this piece of fruit um, with all five senses. So they're going to peel it slowly. They're going to section it out slowly. They're going to notice what it looks like. They're going to, um, you know, notice how it smells, and then they're going to notice how, it's, how it tastes. Um, so they'll just go through all the senses and they're really going to practice mindfulness while they're, um, they are peeling and eating this orange. Um, then they're going to do mindful yoga movements. Um, so there are some appropriate um, yoga poses for children, such as downward facing dog, cat and cow, um, butterfly, cobra, and tree. So they will practice those yoga movements um, with mindful awareness. And then they'll discuss their experiences. Um, and then they'll do another three minute breathing space. Some of the poem stories or handouts they'll get are Ode to a Grape and then three minute breathing space. So that would explain to them what happens during the three minute breathing space. <coughs> And the home practices that they'll get are three-minute breathing space and mindful yoga movements and tasting fruits. So they'll practice a three-minute breathing space at home. Um, they'll also practice yoga movements at home mindfully. And then they're going to practice tasting fruits. Again, they will be recording um, their thoughts, feelings, and body sensations uh, and then bringing it to the next session for discussion. Session five is titled, Music to Our Ears. Um, the key points are that thoughts, feelings, and body sensations often influence how we experience the world. 
Um, we create unique relationships and experiences with our thoughts. Awareness holds it all. So in session, you will do a three-minute reading space, and then um, you will do uh, an activity called Do You Hear What I Hear? So um, the therapist will bring different types of music, and the therapist will play them um, for the children, and they'll write down whether they um, like the music, and then they'll write down their thoughts, feelings, and body sensations. Um, <clears throat> With it, or and how they react to the, to the music. So then the therapist, after listening to all the music, will um, then discuss with the children um, by going back through the music and playing um, each of the genres or the songs or what have you and ask the children to discuss um, what they wrote down, what were their thoughts, feelings, and body sensations. So the therapist might ask, ask things like, did the same piece of music stir up the same or different images and emotions for each of us? Um, can different thoughts affect how we experience different sounds? Um, the therapist might ask to identify any judgments they had, um, but then to remember that to label those as just thoughts um, that they, and try to stay away from the judgments. So after they do the Do You Hear What I Hear, they'll do mindfulness of the body again. Um, they'll also do the three-minute breathing space. Um, one of the handouts they'll get is called The Door. And the home practices are the three-minute breathing space, um, mindfulness of the body, and then mindful listening. Um, so with mindfulness listening, they will pick <clears throat> to either go inside or outside um, for five minutes, three times a week and notice what they're hearing. And they'll write down their thoughts, feelings, and body sensations. Session six is titled Sound Expressions. So <clears throat> the key points are that mindfulness helps us recognize how thoughts, feelings, and body sensations influence how we express ourselves. Um, we can also choose how to express ourselves with mindful awareness. So in session, you'll do the three minute breathing space again, um, sounding out our emotions mindfully. So this activity um, is kind of fun for the kids because they get to act like a conductor. So um, they'll each have a chance to be the conductor and they're going to um, pretend as if the children are an orchestra and they'll each have their own um, they'll each have their own um, instrument if you will um, so it'll be stomping their feet or clapping their hands um, and the conductor will think of an emotion and then try to sound it out with their orchestra um, the other children will be encouraged to you know, write down what they think the title of the song is or what emotion um, they think that the conductor is trying to convey. <clears throat> and then after all the children have done this, then they'll discuss, um, you know, what they wrote down. Um, and they can see how we might think of um, a certain emotion in a different way. Or <clears throat> we might think a certain emotion sounds a certain way. Um, or is supposed to look a different way, or a, is supposed to look a certain way. So after they do sounding out emotions mindfully, they'll do a mindful yoga um, movements again, and then they'll do another three minute breathing space. The handout that they'll get is called hearing, and the home practices are a three minute breathing space, mindful yoga movements and unpleasant sounds. So um, with unpleasant sounds, they'll will practice becoming more aware of three different unpleasant sounds. So then they'll mindfully pay attention to their thoughts, feelings, and body sensations in the present moment and they'll record those. Moving on to session seven. Session seven is titled Practice Looking. So um, the key points are Judging is not the same as um, noting. If we simply observe the experience without judgment, the experience may change. 
we can choose to observe or note our experiences instead of judging them. <clears throat> so your in-session practices are three-minute breathing space, um, and then visualizing with clarity. With visualizing with clarity, um, the therapist will walk the child or the children through um, another visualization. So they'll sit with their eyes closed, and the therapist will explain to the children, you see yourself walking along a path in a park. There are trees all around you. The sun is shining, and you hear other children playing not far away. <clears throat> so the therapist would invite the child um, or the children to use their mind's eye to see the scene as vividly as possible. And they're also asked to use all five senses. So the children are allowed to visualize that for five minutes. Um, then the children are to write down a brief description of the scene with their thoughts, feelings, and body sensations. Um, so the therapist will then discuss with them how is seeing with your mind's eye different than seeing with your real eyes? <clears throat> um, what thoughts, feelings, and body sensations did you have? Uh, were there any feelings or memories that were triggered? Um, and how might thoughts and feelings change what we actually see? Um, the next um, in-session practice that they'll do um, is seeing what is in the mind's eye. So with that one, um, you're going to ask them to draw a picture of something that they use um, daily. So for um, children, it might be a tablet or a parent's cell phone. Um, they might, um, it might be maybe a special book that they read. And you're going to ask them to draw it um, using their mind's eye. Um, they're then to get, going to take that picture home and compare it to the real item so that they can see um, the differences between what our mind's eye sees and remembers and what's actually there. Um, and that's going to be one of their um, home practices that they take home. Um, and then they'll do a, 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 another three minute breathing space. One of the handouts that they'll be given is looking and their home practices will be a three minute breathing space seeing the little details so that's their paper that they brought home and that they're going to com they're going to compare their drawing to the actual um, item and then stressful events so um, this activity um, in this activity they're asked um, to consider three different events on three different days um, and practice bringing mindfulness to those challenging situations that they might have. Um, and then um, to record what might make that stressful. Uh, session eight is titled Strengthening the Muscle of Attention. Um, so the key points here are judging often changes how we experience the world. Um, becoming more aware of judgments may change how we relate to thoughts and feelings. And then you're also going to talk about choice points, um, which we um, discussed earlier in this video. Um, so your in-session practices are a three-minute breathing space, um, seeing through illusions. So this activity is where you bring um, optical illusions for the child or the children um, to look at and then they're telling you what they see and so one child might see one thing and another child will see an, um, something else in the picture and then when you're going to encourage the children to see what some of the other children see and when they see the different pictures within the optical illusion you will ask them to switch their focus from one picture to the other and then you'll ask them if they can see both at the same time. Um, they can they can learn that they can change what they see when they focus their attention in a certain way. Um, they'll do mindful um, moving so or moving mindfully. Um, this is um, very similar to moving slowly, where they're going to move in a slow way and really notice how they're moving. Um, so seeing what is not there 
um, the therapist will construct something out of um, blocks of different colors or just different textures and um, the children will be asked to draw it um, but they'll be asked to draw only a specific um, a, a specific texture or, or a specific color um, in the picture so they might be drawing the negative space within the picture um, they might be drawing just the blocks or just the red blocks or um, just the blocks with the A on them um, and this is going to help them learn to focus their attention on a certain thing and then they'll do um, another three minute breathing space the poem that um, goes out with them is called choices and then home practices are a three minute breathing space choosing to be aware so they get to choose any mindfulness activity and practice it and then observe judging and noting while they're doing that activity and then seeing five new things so they will be encouraged to um, notice five new, new things in their classroom that they never noticed before and then describe them in detail um, and then notice um, how they're having to focus their attention on the thing the one thing that they really haven't noticed before session nine is touching the world with mindfulness the key points are that we have little control over most of the events that occur um, we do have choices in how we respond to them though uh, choice points exist only in the present moment and bringing greater awareness to this moment we may see more choice points within the present moment um, in session they'll do a three minute breathing space um, they'll do an activity called being in touch so the therapist um, will bring several different items such as a hairbrush bubble wax wrap um, pine cone and then they will blindfold um, or have the child put their hands in, in the back of them but they'll have the, their hands facing the children um, with the item in their hands and they will describe the item without naming it and then the children that are sitting around will be asked to describe it without naming it as well <clears throat> afterwards the therapist will ask um, you know did it describing it um, change how you experience the item um, how is it different than what you do every day and then um, you also explain to them that no one sense can tell us all we know about an experience so mindful touching um, is one of the home practices that will go home with them this week it'll be the only new one and that will be um, them finding five small objects to explore with their sense of touch and then they're going to note their thoughts feelings body sensations while they're um, touching it in a mindful way session 10 is what the nose knows um, so the key points of this session are we often react to events by moving towards things we like or judge as good and we often move away from things that we don't like or things that we judge as bad um, judging and experience may interfere with seeing clearly what is in the present um, and what is in each moment and then um, we have choices in how we respond to things so in session um, they'll do a three minute breathing space and then they'll also do judging stinks um, in this activity um, the therapist will have bagged um, items with certain smells so it might be coffee grounds um, it might be um, candle with a certain scent to it um, it could be um, boiled eggs lime onions um, vanilla peppermint and he'll pass or he or she will pass those um, baggies around with the different smells and ask the children to smell it um, they'll um, note fall feelings thoughts and body sensations while these things are getting passed around and then afterwards um, the therapist will ask things like could you see judgments on other children's faces did you see any noses wrinkle um, so and, and then he'll, the therapist will also ask um, did any memories 
get stirred up while you were smelling. Um, and then you'll also ask in focusing on memories, make us less aware, aware of what's going on in the present moment. Um, after you do judging stinks, um, you'll again do mindful moving, uh, mindful yoga movements, and then another three-minute breathing space. Um, poems, stories, and other handouts that we've given out are to be or not to be, um, and things we can learn from a dog. Um, the home practices are three-minute breathing space, yoga movements mindfully, and then mindful smelling. So the child will be encouraged to um, smell some things on their dinner plate, and then describe them using thoughts, feelings, and body sensations. Okay, one of the um, handouts that your, the child would get um, during session 10 will be things we can learn from a dog. Um, I'm going to read that to you now. Never pass up the opportunity to go for a joy ride. Allow the experience of fresh air and the wind in your face to be pure ecstasy. When loved ones come home, always run to greet them. When it's your best interest, practice obedience. Let others know when they have invaded your territory. Take naps and stretch before rising. Run, romp, and play daily. Eat with gusto and enthusiasm. Be loyal. Never pretend to be something you're not. If what you want lies buried, dig until you find it. When someone is having a bad day, be silent, sit close by, and nuzzle him or her gently. Thrive on attention and let people touch you. Avoid biting when a simple growl will do. On hot days, drink lots of water and lie under a shady tree. When you are happy, dance around and wag your entire body. No matter how often you're scolded, don't buy into the guilt thing and pout. Run right back and make friends. Delight in the simple joys of a long walk. Okay, so now we are going to talk about sessions 11 and 12 in this three-month follow-up session. For session 11, this one will be titled, Life is Not a Rehearsal. The key points of session 11 are mindfulness is available in everyday life. So what you'll discuss with your client or with your therapist is that you can use mindfulness practices on a day-to-day -day basis. It does not have to be phobia-driven and it does not have to be targeting a specific thought, feeling, or fear, but you can use mindfulness on a daily basis. Also, we can practice awareness, mindfulness awareness using all of our senses. So based on how you perceive a situation, you can use any sense that you feel comfortable with using to achieve mindfulness at that time. So with in-session practices, the first thing you'll do is begin with a three-minute breathing space. And next you'll move to thoughts are not facts. And in this situation, you're going to encourage your client to again recognize that thoughts are just thoughts. They're not facts. They don't define us. You accept the thought non-judgmentally and let it go. Next, our feelings are not facts either. Feelings are something we experience every day, but they don't define us. You accept the feeling and you move on. Again, you'll participate in the Raise in Mindfulness activity as you did earlier in session just to encourage the client again to remember how to remain, remain mindful in any situation using all five senses if needed. Next, you will do Mindfulness Is. If you'll remember at the beginning of the sessions, you had your clients tell you what mindfulness is to them. So again, as you're closing out your sessions, you will have them tell you now, after they've experienced about 12 sessions with you, what mindfulness means to them. They can do this through writing, drawing, whatever they feel most comfortable with. And then again, you'll end with a three-minute breathing space. Um, some encouraged readings, poems, and stories from their workbook could include the slow dance and a letter to myself. So, in the letter to myself that you are encouraging your clients to write at home, they will basically write a letter to themselves on a sheet of paper um, about what they've learned over the, this time period in therapy with you and how it's influenced their daily living. Included with the letters to themselves, they will also um, need to bring a self-addressed stamped envelope to you which, so you can send the letter to them. So session 12 is living with presence, compassion, and self-awareness. 
The key points in this session, again, are mindful. being mindfully aware can help us in our daily lives. And bringing great, greater awareness to our lives is a personal choice. As well as living with awareness, it requires commitment, compassion, and continued daily practice. So these are things you're really going to want to go over again with your client and reinforce that this is a daily activity. And the more practice you, you do, the better you get. And living mindfully, really, they will see benefits from. Some in-session practices that you will do. Again, you'll begin with your three-minute breathing space. Um, you'll exploring everyday mindfulness, meaning how can you how can you use mindfulness on a day to day basis? Um, so if you so choose, you can do um, program evaluations and have them give offer feedback as to what they think was good or needed to be corrected about the session. You'll end again with a three minute breathing space, and in this um, particular session, you'll have a graduation ceremony, a graduation party. Um, to really celebrate all the accomplishments that your client has achieved thus far. And one more time, a three-minute breathing space. For the three-month follow-up after the last session, the therapist, that this does not consist of a session. This is simply the therapist mailing the letter to myself that the client wrote in their last session to them, as well as including a daily practice calendar to, to again, encourage and promote mindful living. 